All right, very good. Father, thank you for the time together. Thank you, Father. You are the God that heals. You have never changed who you have declared yourself to be. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 and verse 8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, God, that you do not change. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, you say, I am the Lord, I change not. Thank you that you don't change, that you are still a miracle-working God. You are still a God of miracles, of signs and wonders and healings. We thank you. We honor you, Father, for what you've done this morning and what you have in your heart to do in the days to come. We bless your name. We thank you, Father, for the teacher of the house, the Holy Spirit. Lord, you said in John 14 and 26, but when the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, is come, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance whatsoever things I have said. So Holy Spirit, we lean into you. We defer to you. We choose you. We prefer you. Your teaching ministry is perfect. So we thank you that through the principles and the precepts, through illustrations and examples of the word of God, and we certainly ask you for recall of the scripture as it relates to the subject matter that you would minister to us to now, uh, today, and that there would be an unchecked, unbroken, unhindered, unobstructed, unobstructed free flow of the ministry gift of the Holy Ghost. Father, have your way in this place. Have your way in this house. Touch and anoint our ears to hear. Touch our minds to comprehend. Open up our hearts, Father, to respond. Give us the grace to see ourselves in the passage, as this is certainly a life lesson given to us by your spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this great king of glory. Thank you for your lamb that was given to us before the foundations of the world. We honor you. We bless you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Mark chapter four. Mark chapter four. Mark's gospel chapter four. Amen. 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 Would you get me a bottle of water? Thank you. My bottle of water giver outer, uh, he's, his family's in town from overseas, so amen. Uh, let me read through the end of this chapter. Let me just say this again. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. This is what we believe. The Bible says, Whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We believe that the word of God, certainly as we read, as we study, there's knowledge, there is information, there's history, it's historical. But Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 63, it's not the flesh that, pro that prospers. The, the flesh, it, it doesn't prosper in anything. It's the spirit that brings life. He said, the word that I speak to you is both spirit and, and life. The word that I speak to you is both spirit and life. The word of God is life for us. It's not just that there's life in it. It's life for us. It is life. It is living. Yeah? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and dividing asunder, soul and spirit, bone and marrow. It is the discerner of the thoughts and the intentions of the hearts of men. Did you open this for me? Did you open it? Man, I love you. Thank you. So we believe, we believe that there are life lessons in the scripture. Are we good with that? Because listen, if, if you, if you could just open the Bible and start reading and get information. But the spirit of the Lord has a way of just taking that information and tweaking it just a little to where it is life left lesson, life example, life illustration for us to help us to be better, help us to grow and mature in the things of the Lord, help us to move forward. Are we all on the same page today? Are the rest of us on the same page today? Yes. Amen. Wonderful. Good, good, good. Let's just read through this. This is the New King James, Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On that same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Next verse, please. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in a boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, King James, Master, it's synonymous or equivalent with rabbi, do you not care and this is, in the, this is in the present tense. Do you not care that we are perishing? They said, we're going down now. We, 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 we appreciate the fact that you've enjoyed your nap, but oh, by the way, we're sinking. We're going down now. 
Yes, next verse, if you would, please. Then he arose and he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now watch verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, Who can this be? Who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Are we good? Now, the title of the message then is The Sure Word of God. The Sure Word of God. You got it? So in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11, this is what God says, so shall it be that the word that goes forth out of my mouth will not return to me void. It shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing that I sent it to do. So shall it be that the word that goes forth out of my mouth, this is what God says, that goes forth out of my mouth will not to return to me void. It shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing I sent it to do. Good? Listen, the Bible says in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie. God cannot lie. Anything God says, it's true. Anything God says, you can take that to the bank. Anything that God says, there's absolutely no doubt. Nothing can change it. Nothing can squelch it, squash it. Nothing can turn it. That's God because he can't lie. Amen? So many times in this last several, well, this last couple years, you, you know, you, I've just made this statement. Everything in life is being shaken right now. God, according to the scripture, is shaking everything that can be shaken. Nations are being shaken. Kingdoms are being shaken. Leaderships are being shaken. Economies are being shaken. People groups are being shaken. Washington, D.C. is being shaken. And that shaking is causing a lot of shaking in the hearts of Americans. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Thank God for the unshakable, unchangeable word that is eternal to us. Is that right? That's what, listen, that's why there's this constant pushing, pressing, encouraging, stretching, almost to the point of manipulation. I try to stay out of that. Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. It's life for us. Amen? We want to know what the Bible says. And God is really clear about what the Bible says in the day that you and I are living in. Amen? Every word of God Proverbs 3 and verse 30 and verse 5. Proverbs 30 and verse 5. Every word of God is pure. Everything that he speaks is truth. It's not a lie. It never returns void. Are we good? Okay, now, let me tell you this. You've never heard this before, but th this is going to be new, okay? It's going to blow your mind. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. <sighs> there are some things that we know that we know. And there are some things that we know that we don't know. But there is a dimension of things that we don't know that we don't know. Have you ever heard that before? No, you have not. No, I, then no you have not. There are some things that we know that we know. Amen? I left. Rick Paith was so gracious. Brother picked me up at 2.45 Saturday morning. 2.45. Hair combed, face washed, teeth brushed. It was in a chipper mood. Picked me up. Dropped me off at the airport, PDX. Checked my bags, got a cup of coffee, got on the plane. When I walked onto the plane, I got onto the plane, I turned right. Why did I turn right? Because they put me in coach. Now, I know that I know how to do that because I've done it a couple times. Is that right? Okay. But there, is a, there, is a, uh, there are some things that we don't know, that we know that we don't know. There are some things that we know that we know, but there are some things that we know that we don't know. Amen. For example, when I got on the plane, I turned right to sit and coach. I did not turn left thinking that I could fly the plane. Because we would have been on the news the next, we would have been on the news that morning. That's right. Yeah. I know that I don't know how to do that. But this is what the Bible says in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. 
There is a dimension of God and there's a dimension in God of things that we don't know that we don't know because it has not penetrated our minds. It has not penetrated our spirit. He has not brought that revelation to us just yet. Nobody even thought about walking on the water in Matthew chapter 14. Nobody even thought that, that. That was something they didn't know. Slow down. That was something that they did not even know that they did not know because it is impossible that a man would walk on the water. You remember the story. Yeah, Matthew chapter 14, beginning verse 22. Jesus came walking to them on the water. That is something they did not know that they did not know. It had not penetrated their mind or their heart. You understand? You got it? So there is in God a dimension of things we don't know that we don't know because it has yet to been revealed. It has, been, it has yet to be revealed. Amen? Amen? Okay, I just, I just, just, just nod and smile. Just, 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 nod and, just nod and smile. There's a part of God that we just don't know yet. He's, he's bigger than we really understand just yet. So Jesus finishes this whole day, Mark 4 and 35, this whole day of teaching, parables. Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And we know the parable. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that. A whole day of parables. It's the evening time. It's dark. It's, it's in the evening. And this is what the Bible says. This is what Jesus said to the disciples. On the same day when it was evening, when evening had come, he said to them, let us now, the title of the message is the sure word of God. Let us. He, he, he did not say to them, listen, the Father has told me to go to the other side. I don't know about you all. Just, I mean, good luck with that. You know, but, but the, you know, he didn't say that. He said, let us cross over to the other side. This was the word of God. This was the word of the Father to his son. He said, son, tell them I'm sending all of you to the other side. That is a sure word from God. Got it? Now, listen. This is one man's opinion. But I think that New Hope City Church is in a season where God's taken us to the other side. I think that we are. I believe that we are. I conclude that we are in a season where God is moving us to the other side. Not naturally, although the move from up there to down here was a sign naturally of God, what God was doing in the spirit. There's a moving, there's a shifting, there's a transitioning. And listen, there is in the kingdom of God, a side of God we've never seen yet. There is in the makeup of who he is and the revelation of who God is, there's a side of God we've not seen yet. God is bigger than your greatest experience with him. God is greater and bigger than your greatest revelation of him. God is bigger than that. Got it? Got it? So listen, the word other side, those two English words, it's one word in the Greek. The word is paren. It is p. How many of you are taking notes? Okay, a couple. The word other side, those two words, it's the, it's the Greek word paren. It's P-E-R-A-N. It is pronounced paren. And it, it literally means this. Let me just give you the, the, the basic definition. It means to go beyond. It means to go beyond. That, listen, there is a beyond that God is taking us into. It also means to go further than. He, listen, God wants to take his church... I'm talking globally. God wants to take his church. He certainly wants to take us as individuals. He wants to take us beyond. In him, he wants to take us beyond what we've known, what we've tasted, what we've seen, what we've experienced. God wants to do that. God wants to do that. Yeah? One of the definitions for the word beyond, when you look at it in Webster's Dictionary, means this. The word beyond means something that is outside of the scope of an ordinary experience. Something that is outside of the scope of an ordinary experience. Amen? I'm grateful for what the Lord does in the church, but I think there's a beyond that he wants to attach to that. Grateful for what the Lord does in worship, but I think there's a beyond that he wants to attach to that. 
I'm grateful for, for, for those of you that he healed today. I thank God for that. I'm grateful for that. But I think there's a beyond that. Amen? The sure word of the Lord was, we're going there. That was it. That was it. But isn't it interesting, if you look in verse 35, the Lord released them, and this is where some of you are right now, the Lord released them when it was evening. You see, when it, when it was evening, the sun wasn't around. The, the S-U-N. They had the S-O-N. With the S-U-N, it was gone. Isn't it interesting that God launched them into this moment of time of moving from where they were to into the beyond in a moment or in a season? And, and darkness just means a period where there's an absence of light. But, but it also suggests a lack of clarity. You know, when there's no light, there's no clarity, there's no illumination. Are, are, you, are you guys with me today? See, listen, listen, this is what faith is. Listen, when God, when God spreads out the whole picture for you, when God spreads out the whole picture for you, it's just really, really easy to say, okay, I got it. But what if God just says, listen, I just want you to do this. Okay, I got that. What do you want me to do next? I don't want you to do anything, Scott. I just want you to step here. Okay, Lord, I'm here. What, what now? You just wait. Just wait. Listen, if God gave us the whole picture of your life, got saved at 10, by 20 you were going to Bible college, by 25 you were doing this, by 35, if God did that, why would I even need to talk to him? Or, or, I would try to figure it out on my own and do it under my own strength. Or, or I would look at the big picture and go, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. And I would run. God just takes us a step at a time. He just takes it a, a step at a time. And some of you, this stirring that's been in you about this season and you know things are changing and you know things are new and you know God's doing something and all he's given you is just this much and, and, and it just seems like there's not a lot of clarity. There's not a lot of revelation. We're just stepping out by faith. That's what faith is. When Jesus called Peter to walk on the water, he just said one word, Come. Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee. Jesus said, okay. He didn't tell him how to do it. He said, come. Are we together? Am I talking to the right group of people? Now listen, just because you're here doesn't mean you're the right group of people. I'm just, I'm just saying, is this registering in your spirit? Often the seasons that God walk us into, spiritually speaking, it's a little dark. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about demonic stuff. I'm just saying there's not a lot of clarity and what God is, he just, he's just giving you a little bit, and we just step out by faith. What next? I'll tell you later. Okay, but Lord, I'm where you told me to be. I'm doing what you told me to do. What next? I'll tell you later. Because, listen, because those seasons birth in us a maturity that nothing else will. How long are you going to stay in that place doing what God told you to do, being faithful to what God put in your heart, just staying right there? Because too often we get to this place and there's this thing in us that we call it anxiety. Lord, what do I do next? Lord, where do I go now? Lord, what am I supposed to say here? Lord, am I supposed to make this move? What about that job? What about... Just do this. Just do this. Just do this. And Jesus, when there was absolutely no light naturally, said to, the, said to his disciples, we're going to the other side. Are we all together? We're going forward. We're moving into, into the beyond. Yeah? So let me just read down from verse 35. Let me read 36 and get me to 37. Now, when they had left the multitude... They took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. Now watch this in verse 37. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that they were already filling very quickly. Now again, this is just a natural picture of where some of us are, maybe not all of us, but some of us are spiritually. This is a natural picture of where some of us are spiritually. Got it? Hast thou it? Now watch this. And a great windstorm arose. The waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Now listen to this. The word wind is the word, it's pronounced animas. Animas. It is A-N, for those of you taking note, it's A-N-E-M-O-S. The word animas, the word windstorm, it just means a violent agitation. 
That's what was released against them. But now stay with me, because when you look at the word agitation in Webster's Dictionary, it means this. To agitate is when your mind is disturbed or troubled. So for those of you that are here, this is rhetorical. For those of you that are streaming with us, either live or in the archives, are you presently in a season where there's a little bit of troubling, a little bit of stirring, a little bit of questioning in your mind about where you are in God right now? You're not questioning your salvation. You're not questioning the love of God. I'm not talking about that. But you're trying to figure out, Lord, what is this season all about? And seemingly... He's not saying a lot. Seemingly, the Lord is not saying a lot about the season that you have found yourself in. Animas, the windstorm. It is a violent agitation. Again, when you, when you define agi- to agitate, it's when the mind is disturbed or when the mind is troubled. Listen to this. Let me say it this way. Listen, let me ask you this question. This is rhetorical. Okay, this, is, this is rhetorical. What does wind look like? That's right, you can't see it. But we knew it was present. And we knew that was the problem that was affecting the water, and the water was affecting the boat, right? We're all, we're all together, right? Now listen to this. When is, is it seen or unseen? Is it seen or unseen? So listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. This was an unseen force with the intention of keeping the disciple, God's people, from transitioning to the other side or trying to keep them from moving forward. That was what was going on. And and listen, we say this all the time. Go to church, be a good person, be a good moral person, engage, get involved, that's fine. And and the enemy's not going to pay a lot of attention to you. Now, we know the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. And we know the Bible says in John 16, verse 33, Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation. Not might, not maybe, you will. But 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 I'll, I'll tell you this. And, and we've, we've, we've talked about this for years. When you make up your mind, you're going to lay hold of. Give me Philipp, uh, Sylvia, give me Philippians 3, uh, 12, 13, and 14. When you make up, Philippians 3, 12, 13, and 14. When you make up your mind that you are going to pursue, that you are going to run after, that you are, you are going to do what's necessary to lay hold of God's assignment for your life. Because all of us have an assignment. Amen? All, amen? All of us are here with a purpose. All of us are here, and there is an assignment connected to our lives. When you make up your mind that you are going to run after that, you become a threat to the enemy. Look at this. Look what Paul says. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But look what he says. But one thing I do, I'm forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Did you give me verse 12? Can you back me up to 12? Or did I already read it? I don't think I read it. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. I did. Not that I have already attained or apprehended, but I am already, or or that I'm already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I'm so used to it in the King James, I messed it up. He says, listen, my goal is to lay hold of the very thing that Jesus laid hold of me of. My goal is to apprehend to attain the very thing. There was a reason that Jesus, you can look at this in Acts 9, there's a reason the Lord appeared to me on the road of Damascus. There's a reason he knocked me off of my beast. There's a reason he revealed himself to me. He apprehended me on that day. My whole life is about apprehending the very thing that he's apprehended for me. I don't want to just survive this life. I don't want to just go through the motions of this life. I want to lay hold of the thing that God had in his heart when he formed me. In my, thank you, Lord. Before he formed me in my mother's womb. Because for all of us, that's a reality. God knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. That's what Jeremiah said in chapter 1, verse 5. The Lord said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were brought forth, before, I, before you were brought forth from the belly, I ordained you and sanctified you. In Jeremiah's case, it was a prophet to the nations. But God has a call on our lives. He has an appointment, an assignment for our lives. Amen? So in this moving forward to the other side of the sea, for the disciples, there was opposition. And my beloved brethren, in your moving forward into the things of God, you're moving forward into the assignment of God, there's going to be some opposition. There's going to be some pushback. 
Okay, if you're okay, just, just smile at me. It, 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 it's, it's okay. Let me, let me, just, let me, and, and let me just say this to you. If you weren't ready for this, you wouldn't be in this. If you weren't ready for this season of life, God wouldn't have put you here. You know, some, some of you go, man, I did something wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. You've been doing everything right. And God just knows it's time to move from grade six to grade seven. Amen? It's just, it's just, time, to, it's just time to move forward. Yeah, that's, that's the only reason you are in the place that you are. Now look at this in verse, in verse uh, take me back if you would please to Mark chapter 4 and give me verse 37. Give me verse 38. <laughs> now watch this. Okay, so there's, okay, yeah, good. But he was in the stern, he was in the back, asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now again, this is in the present tense. This was, uh, listen, we were really, <clears throat> we really didn't want to disturb you <clears throat> as you're <clears throat> taking a nap, but <clears throat> we're going down. Just thought we'd let you know. Because when your lungs start filling up Jesus with water, we just want to let you know this is why it's happening. Now, a couple things. Listen, <laughs> listen. These are veteran fishermen. They've seen storms before. They've been doing this a long time. Amen? And they are encountering a season they've never encountered before. At least that we have on record. You know, I mean, if, I mean, if they had faced this type of storm sometime earlier without Jesus in the boat, they probably would have gone down, right? This storm is so violent that the water that's supposed to be floating and carrying the boat, now it's in the boat. And the wind is almost capsizing the boat. And Jesus is asleep. Jesus is asleep. Give me another word for sleep. Come on, come on, come on. Rest. 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 How do you do that? How do you sleep with this kind of storm? How do you have rest in your souls in this kind of storm? How do you do that? He had a sure word from his father. Son, I'm sending you to the other side. I'm sending you to the other side. If you think for one second that this storm snuck up on Jesus and he had no idea what was going on, if you think that he didn't know in advance what God was getting ready to do, not just with him, but with the disciples, if you, think that, if you think that he didn't know what was getting ready to happen, he knew exactly what was going on. He knew exactly what was going on. How do you say, listen, these guys are saying, we're drowning, we're going down, we're going to die. Jesus is saying, <laughs> how do you have that kind of rest when you feel like you're that close? And it's all going to be gone. It's going to overwhelm you. You're going to drown in it. The circumstance, whatever the situation is, it could be a financial situation. It could be a marital situation. It could be a relational situation. It could be a job situation. It could be your children's situation. It could be your children's situation. It could be your children's. How do you have rest when that kind of adversity is coming to the point where you are sure you're going to dry? Not dry, die. They were wet. Die. He had a sure word from God. He had a sure word from God. He had a sure word from God. Son, I'm taking you to the other side. And the 12 that I've given you, they're going with you. So what did God say to you? And what did God promise you about your family and your finances and your job and your place in the kingdom? And what has God promised you about your purpose and your assignment and the destiny for your life? What has God said? It's a sure word. It's a sure word. But listen, you can't get to that word if you don't go through this season. You, <laughs> you can't get to that sure word until you go through this season. It's necessary. It's, listen, this whole season had nothing to do with water 
with wind had nothing to do. It was all about training for, the, for those 12 men, those sons in the kingdom, those people. Of, it was all about training to prepare them for what was ahead. That was what it was about. That was what it's about. Are we good? Now watch this. <laughs> but he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. All right? They awoke him and said, now watch this. Think now, think now. Okay, okay, okay listen, listen. Listen. Teacher, master, rabbi, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, now listen, don't miss this because... I know corporately, this is where New Hope City Church is. For some of you, maybe individually, this, yeah, for all of us, this, this is, what, listen, listen. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, their relationship with Jesus, their revelation of Jesus, how they knew Jesus was this. He was their teacher. Their revelation of Jesus in all their experience with Jesus, how they've been exposed to Jesus, and how they've seen the Lord move, their relationship to Jesus was he was there. So what's he going to do about the storm? See, listen, they didn't wake him up to stop this storm. They didn't even know him like that. They, the 12, did not wake him to do anything about the storm they only knew him as teacher. And all the other teachers and masters and rabbis they had been exposed to, those gentlemen were not doing what Jesus had been doing, so they didn't wake him up for that. All they knew about this man up to this point, their whole revelation, how they had been exposed to Jesus, it was all about, their only revelation of him was, was teacher was, again, master or rabbi. You got that? You understand that? But let me say this again. I've been saying it all day. There's a side of this king that you and I love and serve that he wants to reveal to us that's necessary in where we're going. There is a side of this king that we serve and love. We've given our lives to him, amen? Amen. We've given our lives to him. There's a side of him that needs to be unveiled and unraveled and revealed to you and I that's necessary for where we're going. Just skip down with me to verse 41. Skip down with me to verse 41. Jesus stands up. He rebukes the wind. He says to the sea, be still. There was a great calm. He turns in verse 40. He looks at them and says, how is it that you have no faith? Now look at verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be? Who can this be? Who can, who can this be? We've never seen this side of him ever before. Are you, are, is this making sense? We've never seen this side of him before. Look at that. That even the wind and, and the sea obey him. They could not have functioned in Gadara when they crossed, they could not have functioned from this point on, from this season, they could not have functioned the way they did without this experience. Amen? And as you are moving forward towards the destiny of your life, the assignment for your life, whatever it is God wants to do with your life, this season is necessary that you would see Jesus in a way you've never seen him before. When he got into the boat, he was the teacher. He was the rabbi. He was the master. He was the one that we were walking with. We've given our lives to him. He's got this great revelation. He's doing some things from God. We know he couldn't have been sent from God if he hadn't done these things. But nobody, I mean nobody, had ever seen this. Jesus, listen, Jesus set them up and dropped them right into a season of, <laughs> I didn't know that I didn't know that. Is it making sense? Are we good? And, and this is for you. Wow. This season is about growth. This season is about maturing. This season is about the Lord revealing a side of himself we ain't never seen before. Amen? They could have been moved by what they saw, the water, the boat. They could have been moved by what they heard, the wind, the crashing. They could have been moved by what they felt, terror, panic, fear. Actually, they were. Jesus was just asleep. 
You see, God wants to move you and I beyond being moved and making decisions based on our senses. Are you going to believe what he said or what you see? Are you going to believe what he said or what you were told by other people, what you heard? Are you going to believe the word of God or by what you're feeling, that fear and that panic? The, this season, beloved, is necessary for us to move forward. Because tr trust me when I say to you, if I let what I see today make my decisions, I'm in trouble. But listen, listen. All the time, we, I say we were down here building. I, I wasn't really building. I went to reach for a hammer, and Dennis said, no, 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 no. And then I went to reach for a skill saw, and two of them tackled me. They said, no, 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 no. You, just, you can come around. Just, just don't, don't do anything. I tried to paint, and they said, give me the brush. Just, just, just stop. But I was here. Is that right? I was here. Yeah, I was here. And the conversation was, we thank God for this place. God, what a blessing. You know, we're more accessible. We're, we're more exposed. We really believe in our hearts God wants to do something. And we got moved in here and we got excited. And the numbers are going down. And the numbers are going down. And the numbers are going down. And the money is going down. And the money is going down. And the money is going. And listen, if I get moved by that, I'm going to sink with a boat. But I know what God said. I know what God said about this. Listen, a year before we even started to pursue this, I knew what God was saying. It came out of my mouth at a council meeting. I was sitting with the council, and we were, you were there. And, and we were talking about what it might look like to move somewhere else. I said, in a perfect world, you back me up on the sun. In a perfect world, whoever's downstairs would just clear out, and we could just move right in. Is that right? That's right. So even a year before we started moving down here, God began to talk to us. Amen? So this, this, this season that we're in, our ne it's necessary because God wants to show us a side of himself. New Hope City Church ain't never seen. Thank you, I appreciate that. God wants to show us a side of himself that we've never seen. God wants to show us a side of himself, a revelation of who he is, of his power, his strength, his sovereignty, his faithfulness. I mean, all of us have seen to a degree the faithfulness of God, but he wants to show us some faithfulness. Amen. And this that they went through, I mean, I'm just curious. How many of you can say, I can kind of relate to that? I'm just, I'm just curious. Nobody else. Just, 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 I'm good. Everything is fine. There's no wind, no waves. Boat's fine. Everything, good. That's good. Um, trust me when I say to you, uh, we're waiting for you. Yeah. Because the season is necessary. If, listen, if we're going to grow, if we're going to mature, these kinds of seasons are necessary for our life. There is a side of the king, a revelation that will bring us to the place of, I didn't even know that I didn't know that. He models for us the proper posture while in the storm. The word posture just means a mental attitude or an outward behavior. Listen, you'll go through the storm. It's how you go through it that God will want to know. It's not what you go through that defines you. The Lord said this to me years ago. Scott, it's not what you go through that defines you. It's how you go through it. And you can go through it kicking and screaming. And you can go through it rebuking the devil. And you can go through it hollering. You can go through it trying to figure out what you did wrong. And God loves you enough that he's going to pick you up and dust you off and give you rest and take you right back and let you do it again. Because this life is about growing up into the image of Jesus Christ. And so we face, when we face these things, we want to face these things knowing that our God is well able. Our God does take care of us. Our God owns all the silver, all the gold. Our God can answer any question, and even the questions we don't know to ask, God can answer those questions. That's who God is. That's who God is. That, that, that's who God is. Amen? Y'all were looking for something different this morning, weren't you? Just The mere fact that we're in this place is evidence and proof to me that God is working in our midst individually, growing us, maturing us, strengthening and deepening our faith, broadening our understanding of the word of God. Amen? And has a desire to broaden and to open up to us 
a bigger picture of, of who he really is and who he wants to be for us in this time. Now, I got literally another hour of teaching. Thank you, I appreciate that too. Um, but let me do this, because I think that this is really, really important. Let, let me share just a couple verses with you, and then, and then, and then because again, it, I've, I've made the point that I feel like I need to make. Let me say this to some of you. And I'll have just a quick story about this. Do not be intimidated and do not panic when you don't know the next step. Do not be intimidated and don't panic if you don't know the next step. Amen? God takes us a step at a time. We've established that, yes? God takes us a step at a time. So normally I get off the plane in, in Memphis. They pick me up, get me to the Hampton Inn, and uh, I go to my room. For whatever reason, this particular time, in, in the many times that I've been there, uh, and for those of you that don't know, I had a, a chance to spend a, a week with my, my father in the faith, Bishop Mitchell, and uh, what a blessing, what a blessing. I, I went to my room, and as soon as they gave me my key card, it was room 222. And this doesn't always happen, but you guys know me well enough to know I'm kind of a numbers guy, kind of a numbers guy. I knew there was a significance in the room number. And I'm stretching my mind about what two is in biblical numerology and all these other things. And nothing was really landing. I just knew two, 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 two. That's what I knew. And Bishop made this statement. He said, don't panic if you don't know the next step. Because I said earlier, listen, he tells you to do this, just do this and wait. He's not going to give you the whole picture. You'll either try to do it by yourself, you'll run in fear, or you just won't even talk to him about it. Okay, what next? And he likes the what next. He may not answer, but he likes it. He likes us engaging with it. That's why we're here. A fellowship with God. Amen? So, turn that phone off. What's wrong with you? What's, what's wrong with you? For those of you watching, that was my wife. Anyway, and for those of you who don't know, don't know what happened, her phone rang. Turn your phones off. Anyway, listen, now watch this. This is, uh, Sylvia, can you give me Genesis 22, verse 1? Genesis 22, verse 1. This is, listen, this may not be for everybody, but I know this is for some of us. This was certainly for me. This was certainly for me because I've been in just the season I've been in as far as vision, as far as, uh, you know, God, what are you doing? I'm not seeing everything, but I'm seeing a little bit. But look at this in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, just in regards to the message. Look at this. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham, and he said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. Now watch this, verse 2. That's one after one, sweetheart. There you go. And then he said, now watch, take your son. Your only son Isaac, whom you love, go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall. I'm not telling you now. I just need you to get to the land of Moriah. And when you get there, I will, I will make it clear to you the mountain that you need to go to, and I shall tell you when you get there. Okay? Take your son, your only son Isaac, who you love, offer him up as a burnt sacrifice to me, Go to the land of Moriah, offer him his burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall. It shall present, t future, or past? Future, right. It, it, he hadn't said it yet. And he, and he made it clear, I'm not saying anything to you until you get to where I need, need you to be. And when Bishop read that, he said this, do not panic if you don't know the next step. And when I saw that, something in me that I didn't know was there just kind of lifted off me. And I got real happy. Because inside, without saying it outwardly, I've been saying, God, I don't know what to do. I know we're supposed to be downstairs. I don't know what we're doing next. I don't have a clue. But when he said that, it just lifted off me. And I was just sitting there, and I was happy. And the Lord said, hey, Scott, that's Genesis 22, 2. Can you see that? And I was in room 2, 2. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I knew it was significant. I had a clue. But when he said that, some kind of weight on me that I didn't even know was there, Tom, it just, it just lifted. Because it's like, okay, Lord, we're downstairs. What now? Okay, Lord, we moved downstairs. What now? Okay, Lord, we're going to have the final inspection in 48 hours. What now? Okay, Lord, what now? And, and, and he, he ain't saying nothing. But that's okay. That's okay. It freed me from this thing of, of panicking, uh, of panicking because I didn't know the next step. Amen? We good there? All right. Uh, back to Mark chapter 4. Give me just a couple minutes. Let me just, I'm not going to do this whole thing, but give me a couple minutes. Because this is what happens. 
if we're not convinced, if we're not sure that God has our lives in his hands, we run the risk of, 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 of doing this. Mark chapter 4, verse 39. Mark's gospel chapter 4, verse 39. They woke him up. Master, do you not care that we pray? Now watch this. Then he arose, he rebuked the wind, he said to the sea, peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he arose, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, peace. Got it? Then he arose, he rebuked what he couldn't see, but he just spoke to what he could see. He rebuked what he could not see, but he just spoke to what he could see. See, can you see wind? Can you see wind? No, but we know it was a, we knew it was a force, an unseen force trying to hinder what God had said to these 12. He took authority over that. He rebuked that, but he just spoke to the sea. See, listen, listen. If we're not convinced that God has us in his hands, if we're not convinced of God's faithfulness, if we really believe that his word does return void and he really can't get us to the other side, what happens is we'll, 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 we'll change it around. We'll, we'll mix it up. And instead of rebuking the enemy, instead of standing in authority against the enemy, what we can't see, we'll start rebuking people. It's your fault. We're in this place because of you. We're in this place because of your decision. But the Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 12, that we're not wrestling against, but against principalities and powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's right. We don't rebuke one another. If, if you understand the strength of that, that word in the Greek language, and if we are a body, how do you speak that way against your own body? You, you understand? How do we speak ill? How do we try to... You can't do that. You can't speak that way against one another. You can't speak that way against what's happening in worship. You can't speak that way about what's happening in the children's department. You can't speak that way about what's going on with the eldership. You sure can't speak that way about the pastor and think that it's not going to deeply affect the church. We rebuke what we can't see. You have authority over principalities and powers. That's what the Bible said. We, we quoted it earlier, John 10 and 19, Behold, I give unto you power. The word is exousia. It is the word mastery or authority. I give you power to tread upon serpents, over scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Amen? We deal with the enemy differently. Listen, if there needs to be correction, if we need to work things out, yeah, if we need to come together and reason, we, need, we, we can do that. That's fine. We can do it without anger. We can do it without malice. We can do it without, I, I'm going to be right. I don't care. In Jesus' name, I'm going to be. We can do that without all of that. Because it's not about me. It's not about me. It ain't about you either. It's about him. And it's about him being seen through us. So there are times we need to come together and reason and talk and discuss. And if there's offense, we need to take care of it. And if there's unforgiveness, then we need to take care of it. The Bible gives us clear pattern and scripture how to deal with that. But when it comes to dealing with the devil, we deal with it through prayer. We deal with it with the authority that Jesus has given us. Are we good? All right, let me, let me just, I may actually come back and visit some of this next week. But let me, let me do this uh, Hi, Lur, there you are. Give me just verse 41, dear. Watch this. Because this is, this is the thing that is just so uh, in me. They feared exceedingly. Listen, all he was to them up to this point was teacher. All he was up to them, to them at this point was rabbi. All he was, King James, to them up to this point was Master. But listen to what they, the Bible says. They feared exceedingly, said to wonder, who is this? We thought Jesus got in the boat with us, but who is this? We ain't never seen this. Be we have not ever seen this before. You understand? Listen, do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? These seasons are necessary if we're going to move forward because God is bigger than we really believe and he's more faithful than we could really understand. And God, listen, 
It's not our reputation that's at stake. It's not my reputation that's at stake. It's his. Because he's made a lot of amazing comments and statements and decrees and declarations over the church in Longview, Washington. And he is determined to do it because he said it. And if he said it, it's going to never return to a void because God can't lie. Right? So the invitation is, I just want you to be a part of what I'm doing. Scott, this isn't about you. Yes, Scott, I know you're a pastor and I know you run the church and that's nice. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about him. It's always been, it always will be all about him. But the mere fact that he would invite us into this adventure, my goodness. The mere fact that we would have an opportunity in these days to see what God wants to do, my goodness. But I have to see him as more than I've experienced him before. Because he's more than I understand. He's more than I understand. He's more than I understand. He's bigger than I've ever experienced. Amen? This doesn't have anything to do with religion. It doesn't have anything to do with being good moral people and we go to church on Sundays, that's what we... No, that is so shallow. It's baby Christianity. It's about a relationship with the living God who is inviting us into this adventure. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Amen? Are we good? Jesus was able to rest on this pillow because he knew what the, what, the, what the word of the Father was. Son, go to the other side. Take them with you. Go to the other side. Always in the will of God. John 8 and 29. For I, this is what he said. For I do always those things that please the Father. No sin. No mistakes. He never went left when he should have went right. He was always in step with the will of God. He knew exactly what was happening. But he knew that he was walking them into a season, ultimately preparing them for Calvary. He was walking them into a season that this was necessary to move them forward. So, if you are there, if you're there, I want to pray with you. If you sense, certainly through this message, oh, that's what's going on, okay. If you sense that you are heading there, I want to pray with you. If you're not really there yet, but you don't want to miss out, I want to pray with you. And if that's you this morning, just stand. Let, let's pray. We do, this is what we do. Let's pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray that God would do in us what is necessary to continue to move us forward. If that's you, just stand. Let me, let me just pray for you this morning. Yes, master. Yes, teacher. Yes, rabbi. Yes. But so much more. So much more. And there has to be, listen, there has to be some things settled in me about who he is so that I don't fall apart with where he's taking me. I have to be settled about who he is so that I don't fall apart as he's taking me forward. That makes sense? Yeah. So Lord, for those of us that have said, I am right there, for those that have said, I can sense that I'm coming to that, for those that have said, Lord, I don't want to miss out, and if this season is necessary, God, for those, for those watching that are streaming with us, for those that are here this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, would you do everything necessary to prepare our hearts, to prepare our hearts, to prepare our hearts for where you're taking us? God, we declare you are faithful. You are sovereign. You are perfect. God, nothing escapes you. And yet, Lord, sometimes this flesh and blood just we just get weak. We get weak. And unbelief can rise up. Fear can rise up. All of that can happen. But God, in the name of Jesus, because you love us, and because of the word to us, would you do in us, in our hearts, what's necessary, in our minds, what's necessary. 
in our families, in our finances, in our job, all of it, God, would you do what's necessary to prepare us fully for where you want to take us and what you want to do in this season we find ourselves in. Father, we believe that you are much bigger than we've ever experienced. We believe there's a revelation of you that is coming to the church. There's a side of yourself, God, you want to unveil to the church that's necessary for this season. Father, for those that are struggling with confusion, for those that are struggling with any kind of anxiety or fear about where they're at, for those, for those Father, that are just scratching their head and they're frustrated, Father, would you calm that storm? Would you calm that storm? Would you let peace come? Would you still every mind, every heart? Would you let peace come, Father, in the name of Jesus? And Father, even if you don't answer the questions, I pray that you would give grace and you would teach us to rest. Lord, what a great example you model for us in the midst of the storm. You're just stretched out on a pillow. What an incredible picture. And you were able to do that because you knew the word of the Father. I pray, Father, that the word that you have spoken to us individually, corporately, would burn in our hearts once again. It would burn, God. And you would bring us to the point where we can just stretch out, recline, be at ease, and rest. Quick to be obedient if you do say anything, but even in the midst of the storm, God, resting. Would you do that for us, Father? Would you do that in us? Would you do that in us? Would you do that in us? Those of you that are praying for family, children, spouses, grandchildren, Lord, I pray that you'd stir in them again what you said, what you promised, and what you want to do, what you are doing. Whatever your greatest day was with Jesus, he's bigger than that. Whatever your greatest experience was with Jesus, he's bigger than that. Whatever your greatest revelation is of the Lord in the word, in prayer, he's bigger than that. He's bigger. He's more than. Just let God, just let God surprise you. Just let God surprise you. Okay, you, you can hear that, you can receive that. That's, that's clear. Is that clear? All right, did it help? Okay, thank God. Thank God. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance over you and give you peace, shalom, rest, rest, rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, hug a neck, give somebody a high five, greet a couple people before you go. We love you, God bless.